Man now visits Grimethorpe Colliery in South Yorkshire to examine the impact of the pit closures on the mining community. Mega says that the information that British Coal is giving us is wrong and he is, as far as I am aware now, in contact with British Coal, putting them right on that matter. The information we give you yesterday still stands and that is the right information. Oh, there you go. With about 650 left, that's not accepted redundancy and uh, the... We, We've, we've, we've been told that he will require about 150 to 200 of them men. Uh, the rest of the workforce will be sent to home on pay. All, the, all it is is scare tactics from Colwood to get you to get to your redundancy and shut pit through back door. Right? As a woman, what will it mean to know that the men in your family might be facing the dole in a matter of days? Well, it's awful. It's You can't just describe it, thinking it out. You know, the, the, the other family, their families as well. It, it's just too much, I can't, uh, I can't really talk and say much about it. We've got it, we've got all the pit houses, tennis houses, the lot. I mean, I do for can, Canadian and American television. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Canada, Canadian <laughs> television. <laughs> uh, regarding the pictorial view of what I've got. <laughs> yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if she's thinking about coming down and finding a few beauty spots. Huh? A miner in, in, in Grimethorpe is no different to a miner in, in Doncaster, a miner in Kent or a miner in Durham. The only difference between us all is that we've got different accents, but we're all miners. I mean, that is basically the only thing. We all have our own types of humour and the humour is, is universal. And, and, that, and the pride of that actually getting the job done. I mean, you're doing a masculine job in a masculine atmosphere, uh, in a dirty, horrible atmosphere. But there's some kind of pride when you've done it. I mean, it's it's hard to describe. But certainly, I've never been ashamed of it. And I will always carry pride, no matter what I go on from, if they close Grimethorpe, I will always describe myself as Ken Hancock, minor. We've been born into this world, uh, a minor sort of thing. It's just a um, kind of race of its own, a part of that. You're surrounded by um, the spoil heap, the coal lorries, the mine itself, the structure, the people. It's all about mining in Grimethorpe, nothing else, just mining. And um, when you've been brought into the world, that kind of environment, you have a sense of pride. You had a feeling you were proud to be a miner. That pride will probably always be there, although it'll not be the same effect once the colour is gone. Oh, at 15 years old, also, I was, 
I, would, I was so macho, I mean, it was unbelievable. And I look back at, at, at some at times I've had when we've all been there, I mean, you know, 15-year-old kids trying to prove yourself in the world, and you're all going to try and let, be a little bit better than Joe Bloggs next door. And I would always, I would always a big lad. I would always built, built big framed, I mean. And I, I was going to prove to rest that I could work as hard, if not harder than them. I mean, a miner's not happy unless he's worked harder than the rest of his four mates. That's just, that's what's built into you. There's no, there's no idle miners. There's some works less than others. But there's no idle miners. <laughs> and the threat to the pit is, it's a threat to the whole community and to each member of it. And so it's important for the church and for all the people who care about Grimethorpe to be involved in supporting the miners' fight at the moment. Thanks very much. Okay. Can you give us a few names, sir? That's uh, Tony McPherson. <laughs> <laughs> At first, we, we thought that we'd probably only fill four or five coaches, but the momentum's grown and grown, and we've got 21 from Grindthorpe. We've had, I think we've had a good turnout of women. And I think there'll be lots of women's groups there to, to back us up, as they have done in the past. We've, we've had lots of support off the women. That was to the feminists. <laughs> you've got the women with you now. Oh, yeah, yeah. We've got to manage Great Atom, Great Atom, 485. I mean, there's been a few years in between that I couldn't manage Great Atom, but <laughs> no, I think that's where we are. No, I'm, I'm proud to march along with my wife and my children. I mean, that, this will do my son more good than sitting and watching it on television. At least it will say in 20, 30 years' time when we've all done with bits or whatever, if they get the way, saying I was there and I supported my dad and my mum. Brilliant. And I love it. First, let me tell you, to the thousands of you who are there from this corner, right the way to sweep, right the way through over to this corner, you are now over 300 yards deep, and I still have to tell you that they're still marching up Path Lane to get into this valley. A very special speaker because he comes to us from a mining village. Grimethorpe in Yorkshire and I have great pleasure in introducing to you Father Tony McPherson. Can I start off this afternoon by saying thank you. Thank you to so many people who have come together in this park and on this march today for the people of Grimethorpe and the people of the other villages that are affected by these terrible closures that have been announced. These announcements deny something of the dignity of the people of my parish and of the people of the other parishes affected. We want a future. <laughs>
Well, I've been to work this morning. Um, finished work, come home, had some dinner. Then I decided to go job hunting. Two days left to go. Now's the time to try and uh, see what there is for me. Did you find anything? Where about did you go job hunting? Well, I went to um, Sash, which is a double glazing firm in Grimethorpe. It's that long since I've filled an application form and it just seemed a little strange. Um, details which I never expected being on what I've got to fill in. Even brief details of pastimes, hobbies and sport carried out. Um, my specialities, I suppose, is coin collecting, record collection. Love watching football. Please tell us why you feel you would be more suited for the position you are applying for. Again, if I can't contribute to Grand Thought Colliery anymore, SAS must be the best alternative. I've lived in Grand Thought all my life and willing to give my best hot job, if I can get one. I put down it's hard to be unemployed after 20 years' work, so it's my only chance of continuation and supporting my family. I've asked for serious consideration and help restore a little self-respect. So that just about sums the uh, job application. It is important to work. You need some self-respect. You need something to keep you sane. You need something to keep you busy. I was brought up to work. I'm working class and I'm proud of it. I have no bones about that. I'm working class. I'm not trying to shed no image and trying to say that I'm... No, I'm not one of these working class wallers. I'm working class and I'm proud of it. I want work. I'm prepared to work. This government and nobody else will let me work. It's not me that I don't want to work. They're just taking my work away from me. I mean, at 40 years old, it's... It's a funny time to have to pick up and start a new career, to find something new to do. Besides that, I was always confident that Ken would be a miner, would, would finish his days, his working life would be done, he would start his working days as a miner, and he would finish, but Pitt would still be there. That's a young Fergie. <laughs> A young Woody. That's Johnny. Oh. <laughs> Me with moustache. This Ken, who is he? I'm there, I'm peeping through like a rat. Ah, over yeah. a brush. Ken. Is he Ken there? That's a younger me. Even Johnny had a moustache. Ah, yeah. Even the bit of haircut, didn't they? After them were probably three best looking lads at Grand Thorpe oh, College, that gen. He wore a, a, a photo to mark victory fruit strike. And uh, as you know what happened like. That's brilliant, then. I, like, I love that picture. I've seen that one. Yeah. That's how they used to line up, that. With, with shield. Yeah, that one. Have you seen, have you seen right. that film, well, Zulu? Kenningly. But when they all sat, all, when they all line up, they beat the shields. Well, that's what they used to do. And we and it all picky us to shout, Zulu. 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 That's right. That was Doncaster Race Course, St. Ledger. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one, that one. <laughs> I think this one says it all, though. Now we're taking it softly, softly, touching the still bloody eating as hard. Oh, the brokers, uh, the brokers heads there, they're trying to break his heads well, now, Jim. That's what you get for, eh? Asking fighting, for fighting for the job. That's what I'll miss more than, that's what I'll miss more than Pete. It's, it's my mates that I work with. Yeah, this one's... I mean, I, you take some stick, you take some stick and, and that bit. This photo is a typical example. Well, well, this one is 2nd March, after... Uh, death of David Gareth Jones, which were a miner killed during its strike. And as you can see, people turned in Arctic snow to, as a mark of respect for that lad, and, and such as Joe Green as well. Mm. And I think the thing that will always, almost stick out in my mind is them lads that were sacked through dispute, they're still sacked, never got the jobs back. All they were asking for work, and this, this lad had lost his life through it. Such as that photo, I'll stick in my mind. Because it's showing a mark of respect for your mates. Things are things that <clears throat> that I think the lotners will miss when when Pit does close and we all still fighting anyway for it. I'm hoping it's still lots of stops fight, on. Hey, Johnny, we? We've got to fight for it. We're in Dutchland, aren't we? No. There's no other option. No. There's no one else with the fodders. I mean, he's I went to the and the guests 
it's old. I'm sorry, it's too old for a job. Oh. And that. And they keep trying for jobs and what have you. I mean, yeah. they've already been thrown on scrap heap to start off with. Yeah. After they've been told that they're no good for a job so many times, mm. they feel as though they're no good for anything. And that, I think that is what actually gets them to rock bottom and makes them feel that low. Yeah. Well, look at me, I mean, if somebody tells you you're no good for long enough, Ken mm. is totally shattered. Yeah, he is, yeah. devastated. He's just come to, to a point in his life where he was doing really well in his job, he enjoys his work, mm -hmm. and then this happens. Well, at present, he's, he's dead busy. I don't know how it's going to affect him when, when it's all stopped. Nothing. I mean, like me, we hear someone on telly, I mean, that Tuesday when they announced, the, I mean, we cried. Uh, Matthew mm. could see, I mean, Charlotte didn't know what was happening. Charlotte just said, what's up with him? And then, I'll not mention his name, but a mate had asked came round. I made him a cup of coffee. And if we all didn't sit down again, and mm, someone else will mention, yeah. and this is a single lad, single yeah. lad, and we yeah. all sat, and we were all at it again, we were all saying, oh, shut mm. up, don't start me off again. Mm. Because it were like, mm. what, being declared on it, it were like, yeah. well, yeah. yesterday, so I woke up with an headache, and I had an headache, continuous, all day, and all it was, was worry. You know, because like... I'm not too you know. No, it's too fine. Not because it women will go and do me to think... You know what a change, because I've seen yeah, it happen, no, and I, I'm, 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 scared I'm so scared to what it's, it is actually going to do to That's him. Not this Christmas, and not this summer when it's all new to us. We'll have a nice holiday with his kids. We'll still be all right. It's when mm. you know when press has gone, and when it stories yeah. blown Finished, over, yeah. when everybody's forgot about us, and yeah. we're still st stuck here all together. Mm. You know what, know what I'm is going to happen? What, 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 what is going to happen? We've already found mine in yeah. so much. Yeah. So it's it's going to be it's going to be difficult for a lot of lads. I mean, we've 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 all gone to the same schools. We were. I mean, I've got mates at Pitt that I went to junior school. We we started at junior school. We went through from junior to to middle school. Then up to high school, did all the schooling together, started at Pitt same day, did all his basic training together, worked together basically for 25 years. I mean, it's you're not losing a workmate, you're losing a brother, you're losing a son, you're losing a father. I mean, it's it's a, a way of life. Pitt's closed us, it's clothed us, it's right. fed us, it's took us on holiday, it's warmed us, kept us, kept us, kept us warm, it's done a lot for us, but most thing that always stick in my mind is men that's worked there. The brilliant lads. There's no way no two ways getting about it. They're just great lads that you work with. I know soldiers might get on about their mates like this that's in Northern Ireland and things like that, but these lads that they're, they're in Fickerit every day. Some of them have been down there thirty years at Fickerit. But they're they're the bees knees that best betting any army man. So just for the record, it's Brian Lewis. It's Brian Lewis, Yorkshire Art Circus, Castleford. Brian, tell me, how, how did the project come about? Well, on the Wednesday, after the Fit Closure programme was announced on the Tuesday, Mel Dyke, the head teacher, the deputy head teacher of this school, phoned me in Castleford and said, could we do a book by Christmas? And then I said, no, I think we should do a book very, very quickly. We should do a book, actually, in a day. A lot of people outside mining communities don't realise that, that pits don't exist in cities. Pits exist in villages which were, which were created for the exploitation of coal. And grandfather worked at the colliery, and the father worked at the colliery. 
sadly he would cripple with many fit injuries and other illnesses and died at an early 48. Yeah. He never wanted me to work at the colliery. I came to the colliery um, <laughs> for a job for life. Yeah. We've got to bear some responsibility mm. uh, for not supporting the mining industry. Personally, I've yeah. got seven open fires. Yep. Yeah. I despise men who come out with um, I'm only a miner you know, because I don't feel that I'm only a miner I feel that I'm one of these that's producing wealth in this country and keeping lights on and eating that keeps us warm It could be a remarkable celebration of, of a day which is not a day which you would normally celebrate that's I mean, right. This yeah. is, this is uh, real history that we're yeah. into that's yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even when you were a kid you were a miner Yeah you yeah, were part yeah, of the mining community. Yeah. You, were, you, were quick, you, you were straight into that man's world, weren't you? Yeah, you, your father yeah. was a miner, your yeah. uncles, your cousins, they were all miners. Yeah. Women worked in um, in the mills and clothing factories, yeah. things like that. Yeah. There's none of them jobs for them round here, neither. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a sense of pride. You even spoke with pride when, yeah. when you say, I'm a miner. Yeah. It, when I think about it, it's enough to put the ghost pimples all over you, that sense of pride. Be great will you see. will you give a story to somebody, yeah. Father Tony? Yeah. We want everybody to have their feelings recorded so today. It's, yeah. it, it shows at its, at its hardest in where you get communities which have one purpose, one purpose in common, the, 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 the mining of coal, a respectable, proud tradition, and you take it away from them, and what is hateful as well is, you don't only say I'm going to close your feet, you say I'm going to do it the day after tomorrow. You don't treat people like that. I've no, not been eating, I don't sleep, I'm just, oh, you know, I mean, I don't mind saying I'm breaking down into tears at times, and my wife, especially when I see the courts and look at kids. But there's always that feeling then inside, and my own personal feeling, I'm a bit more resolute than that. So to, I ain't going to let them grind me down, you know, I'm going to go down, yeah, they're going to drag me from that pit, kicking and screaming, I ain't walking away from that jump, they're going to chuck me out, simple as that. Right then, so, could you, en could you envisage getting on your bike then? No, I might as well rot in my village for the rest of my life. I think it'd take a two million pound pause win to rip me from ground floor. Yeah. Other than that, I'm quite prepared to spend the rest of my life here. I definitely wouldn't took root my family in search of a job down south or anywhere. No. It's simple. I'm born and bred in Grimethorpe. The colliery were there before I was born and I expected it to be there after my death. I want a job at Grimethorpe Colony. Yeah. But there's people denying me that right. It's bloody old dog. It's bloody old dog. about ground sort of thing that conjures up what people think about is because it's ours. We live here. This is our community. I mean I don't want to live in, in Surrey or Sussex. Because I'm not I weren't born down there. I'm not I'm not from Surrey. I'm not from Sussex. I'm from Grindthorpe. Simple as that. And okay, it's a dirty place. It might be to some people who's never lived around it, it's backside of world. In fact to people, certain people on Barnsley Council Grimethorpe stops, you know, Barnsley stops at Shafton. Yeah. We don't exist down in this neck of woods. But at the end of the day, this village has provided employment since for un virtually 100 years for people who condemn the same, same village. There's no wrong with this village. And it's not what village looks like, basically, is it? I mean, it's people that surround you that's the main thing. It's that's not right. how pretty your village looks. It's no good living in a pretty village somewhere if nobody's got time of day for you. But round here, everybody if everybody cares for one another, if something happens in the village, everybody rallies round to help that, that person if they're in difficulty. We love it, kid, don't we? Yep. 
Ξάβλο. a marvellous turnout, so that's the, the first thanks from Grimethorpe. You all know the story, the case for Grimethorpe, and that's what I'm going to highlight. I've wrote all these bits out, and I'm not even going to bother now. This year, currently, an unprofitable pit is making £2.7 million profit. In fact, last week, when we were calling, and that was a week when lads were dejected, the heads were down, nobody was going to consider uh, working too hard. We made a quarter of a million pound profit in one week. But I can rest as you can rest assured, the NUM and the Grimethorpe miners and the Oak miners will not backtrack. The lads that's still there, we're going to keep fighting for his jobs, no matter how long it takes. I would like to invite any of the select committee, any of the Tory MPs, including Tarzan, to come to Grimethorpe and have a look at what we're doing, and never mind about they know what's best. My pit's making profit. We're in, we're in a profitable situation. Grimethorpe should stop open, and I thank you very much for your support. The anger will probably subside. It'll never disappear. It'll all be built up in there. Um, I shall find some outlet for it, whether it be politically or trade union wise or whatever. But I shall certainly find some. I mean, they're, they're tearing me out apart as a miner. They're not tearing me out apart as a man. They're not going to get that satisfaction. I'm going to find a job. I'm going to find education, I'm going to find summit. Which, every way I go, I will channel whatever I've got, whatever anger I've got, into that job that I'm going to do in future. And it will certainly be channeled against this Tory government for the rest of my life, for what they're doing to me, and what they're doing to my kids. I'm going to try and fight for a, for a system that's compatible, whether it be Labour, SDP, Tory, whatever, the the name tag over the top of the door don't matter, because the only tag over the top of my door is concerned, and that's as a Labour Party member, it's concerned, concerned at what's happening, that we've got bloody kids that can't get work, never had work, never ever likely to have work, we've got blokes like me, isn't it, 40 year old, willing to work, always worked, and never good, probably never going to ever work again. I'll find some I'll make sure of that. We'll not starve, will we? No. no. We didn't starve in 84, 85. We ain't going to starve in 1992. No. No way. I thank you for your support and it's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you very much. <laughs> like a sample, a taster of the book. I was a pupil at Willowgarth and I trained as a joiner before going down the pit as a face worker 15 years ago. I was actually on the face working when the news came across the tannoy. Grimethorpe Colliery will cease production on the 30th of October. All the men just stopped working and we went into the main gate and sat down talking about it. We'd been conditioned into knowing we were going to close down for months but it seemed so final. We knew that Grimethorpe wouldn't survive. We never ever thought the pit would close. <laughs> My dad used to say it was the best little village in England. I don't know what he'd say now if he came back. <coughs> My husband's a deputy. From being in charge, as it were, he doesn't know what to do. He's no direction at all. We talk about the future and end up rowing, usually about money. It's not only the money, it's loss of status, position in the family, being dependent on somebody else. I get young men coming into my surgery. They have a good strong handshake, but they're wanting antidepressants. They're in real states of depression brought about by stress. What they need is work. I'm proud of what we miners do. I'm proud of producing the fuel that produces energy for the nation. You've got to have worked in a mine to appreciate the comradeship and the team spirit that I'm talking about. Thank you.
Can I just, on behalf of the school, thank everybody, especially Yorkshire Art Circus. We would never have got off the ground without them. In the book, you look, we've read the bit out today that if certain people knew a little more or had experienced a little more, then perhaps the industry wouldn't be in the stage it's in at the moment. I thought of that. I was trying to remember the actual expression when Brian told his story this morning. Is it something like, you have to work in a man's socks before you can know him? <laughs> or something like that, isn't it? The other expression that stayed with me all this fortnight has been for evil to prevail all it takes is for good men to do nothing well we didn't did we we did something that's it i thank every one of you and can i close with if you didn't sign the book on the way in will you please sign it today the very last person to sign the book on Saturday when we wrote it was, there were two entries. One was Kenneth George Hancock, NUM branch representative, and the last one said Gail Hancock, miner's wife and proud of it. Thank you. what we've got us for and to me that's the most important thing it will they'll never ever take that away from us they'll never take that away from me and I don't want none of the finer things in life I won't brought up with the finer things in life as long as my kids love me as long as my wife loves me as long as we love each other that is everything to us but all the only other thing I want from that is work and ability to be able to fetch your wage home into this house. No 4,000 quid a week, so that's buying the sky, I ain't never going to earn it. I want me 160, 170 pound a week, fetch your own pay, and I'll pay my bills, I'll keep my shoes and my clothes on my kids' back, we'll keep clothes on our backs, we'll go away once a week for a holiday, once every year, and that's all we want. How are you coping with it all, do you think, at the moment? The tearing is apart. I mean, the tearing... <coughs> They're taking away my livelihood. And I'm, I'm fearful for what... for what's going to happen to my kids, basically. Uh, as I've already said, I don't want no gain. They can shove the redundancy payments, and British call and government, and they can make it how much they want. They can shove it wherever they want to shove it. I wish they'd shove it back into industry so that I can have a job, so I can keep my pride, so I can keep my family. That's all I want them to do. I'm not asking for note. I mean, Christ, I'm asking to go down a pit. I'm asking to go and work in filthiest, dirtiest, most dangerous conditions that any man's ever been asked to work in. That's all I'm doing. That's all I want. I'm not asking for a Porsche. I'm not asking for a seven-bedroom country mansion. You know, I mean, I'm not asking for that. I just want to be able to maintain my family. And in return, I'll put back into this country in energy and in, and in, in work commitment everything, every penny they put back into me. I've done it for 25 years. I can't see why I can't do it for another 20. And that's all we want. And that's all that any miner wants to do. He wants to maintain his family home and he wants to maintain his family interests. And basically what we've got to do. But no, the turn is apart. The just turn is apart. I don't, I don't know what, to, what else to say about that. Anyone? Don't take a smile, if you will. Don't make me smile. Thank you. It's not a day for Joe reality. No, thanks a lot. Okay, welcome.
another hour and a half and that's it. Take some grasping but I think in a few months time it might be all flattened this. It seems strange the closer it gets to half past one the worse it seems to get. When you see all these people here the way down for the last time. It's saddening. The, the rumours regarding the 12 week severance and the redundancy has eventually got to some of men's hearts. But I mean, it, if we look at it in real perspective, there's about 180 men gone out of the workforce of 900. Uh, we believe that British call should continue. Hi guys, what's last time? Last time, what? Have you got families to look after as well? Yeah, I have a 16 month old baby at home. And not for him now, is it? A lot better. <laughs> I like to swear on that. Did you like this year? to go down, just have a look around. We've still got his memories. We can't take them away from us. Memories will still be there, no problem. There's a lot of lads upset. I'm upset my that It's possible that uh, a lot of them are not seen them more. It's a good workforce. Uh, it's just it's terrible way they're being treated. And I think it's disgusting. Uh, if you if you're in army, you get a medal. Once you fought a war, we've been fighting every day. The conditions that we're in down there, we put best as lives into it. I put 18 years in, and uh, we just find it disgusting where they're treating like. Uh, it's, it's a sad day that they're, they're ceasing production at Grimey. He's making this village into a graveyard. If there's any other questions I can ask, any, ask you know, anybody wants to ask any. No, well, thanks a lot anyway. <coughs> when Grime Thorpe closes, if Grime Thorpe closes, I'm going to be left here with my wife, my daughter, and my son and we'll be left to fend for ourselves. We'll just be another dull statistic. It's the poverty trap. We're in it. And I can't, as a man, I'm so ashamed I can't note about it. It's, it's basically upsetting, like. Tuesday the 13th, a day of despair. The day the Tory government made clear they did not care. 31 pits must closed. We will not change our minds. First 10 to go immediately. Not profitable, they lied. Whole communities to suffer, but this does not carry worth. Nor the plight of the strong, proud miner, the salt of the earth. No thought to the future of generations to come. Three million are employed now. What future for you, my son? You could have been the fourth generation to work down Grindthorpe's mine but a tale of vast incompetence will all unfold in time. <laughs>